text read for today, thank you, Mary. The title of this message is Still Dreaming. The timing of it all. Tomorrow we'll celebrate the life and the legacy of the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. May his soul rest in peace. Then two days later on Wednesday, January 20th, our country will once again make history when it inaugurates along with President-elect Joe Biden, the first woman and the first Indian American and the first Jamaican American black woman to ascend to the office of vice president of the United States, Kamala Harris. The timing of it all, the paradox, these celebratory events reflecting progress in our country on the backdrop of one of the darkest days and weeks in our country in our lifetime. With the riots and the insurrection at the US Capitol causing destruction, death, pain and fear. With video and audio proof of the vitriol, the evil, the hatred, the violence and the danger. So many lives could have been lost, but there was still so much damage done. The timing and the paradox of it all that on the same day of the attack on the US Capitol, in the Red Hills of Georgia, monumental progress was made with the election of Reverend Raphael Warnock as the first black man elected to the Senate from Georgia and with the election of John Ossoff as the first Jewish Senator from the Deep South since Reconstruction. As a result of the vision and the significant work and organizing of a black woman, the Abrams and coalition and partners who rock the vote in Georgia. This can be another turning point in America, but only if we tell the truth. Pundits, including congressmen and women, have been saying to Americans for the past 10 days, this is not America. What happened on January 6th is not who we are. Don't let your children believe this is who we are. Well, in honor of the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., I say to you today, my friends, that this is America. And if you're still dreaming, thinking that it's not, it's time to wake up, stop dreaming, see reality, and get to work. For as Jesus said, you shall know the truth and the truth will make you free. And the truth is, yes, we've made progress in this country, but January 6th happened and it can't be taken back. This is America. Yes, black people and white people are coexisting. You only need to look in your pulpit. High Park Union Church, but January 6th happened and it can't be taken back. This is America. Yes, Raphael Warnock and John Ossoff were elected in the Red Hills of Georgia and pre the Pretrial Fairness Act was passed and Chris Welch is now the elected speaker of the House in the state of Illinois. But January 6th, 2021 happened. You weren't dreaming that it happened in the US Capitol in Washington, DC, and it can't be taken back. And the threats are continuing all over this country even today. This is America. And the America displayed on January 6th and the threats that have continued today eerily resemble the America that Dr. King experienced more than 50 years ago. As this King Day approached, of Dr. King's many speeches and sermons, I wanted to quote a speech other than I have a dream. Yet the words that kept ringing in my ears from that famous speech are these. I have a dream that one day on the red hills of Georgia, 
The sons of former slaves and the sons of former slave owners will be able to sit down together at the table of brotherhood. This and every other clause of the dream were statements of hope, of conditions not yet realized. Not only was this not a reality in King's time, it was far from the reality which is why it was such a poignant verse of the dream. And this, this I know for sure, Dr. King never intended for us to be lulled asleep by the dream. He never intended for us to prematurely claim the realization of the dream. He knew that we had a long way to go. He knew the forces of evil were strong. He knew racism and white supremacy were vicious. After all, his home had been bombed and his life and his family's life threatened. He knew that many of the sons of former slave owners were vicious and evil. And I believe this verse landed in the dream because it was so far-fetched because of the evil. Yet he dreamt it. He hoped. He wrote the vision anyway. King, Dr. King never intended for us to be lulled asleep by the dream. He intended for us to be wide awake. He intended for the clauses of the dream to highlight the work to be done. He intended that the gap between the dream and reality would define the work that needed to be done and that with God on our side, the dream would become a reality, but we must do the work. After January 6th and the threats of this week, I ask you, are we still dreaming? The dream is not a reality and we can't get there by dreaming for now, we should all know there's much work to be done, but whose work is it? Dr. King admonished us that injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. So if you thought the work was someone else's to do, the threat has now come to our doorstep. The events of January 6th and the threats of even today show us that the threat can come right to us. The injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere, so we too must do the work. It may be different work depending on our social location, but we must do the work anyhow. And if January 6th and really the past four years have shown us anything, they've shown us the work that we must do. I'm on my way to the biblical text, but let me preach a little bit of Dr. King first. When King said the, the sons of former slaves and the sons of former slave owners, He's naming an important principle, and that's a principle that when you're trying to bring about monumental change, history and heritage matter. For Dr. King could have said black men and white men will be able to sit down, but he didn't. He named them by their heritage, the sons of former slaves and the sons of former slave owners to make the statement that in order for them to sit down at the table of brotherhood, there's something that we will have to overcome about their heritage. Still dreaming, I promise it will become clear. You see, King was wide awake. He wasn't simply wishing for a day when black men and white men could sit together and work together. He was naming that in order for this to be, there will need to be some work done because they are not just black men, they are the sons and daughters of the formerly enslaved. And they're not just white men, they're the sons and daughters of the former slave owners. And this history and this heritage matter. And it can't just be swept under the rug like it will just go away. This history and this heritage must be reckoned with one way or another for the dream to become a reality. And this points to the work that must be done. 
And we're in the right place in our text today for Jesus is teaching this very lesson. John 8, 31 reads, then Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, if you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples and you will know the truth and the truth will make you free. They answered him, we are descendants of Abraham and have never been slaves to anyone. What do you mean by saying you will be made free? Don't miss this. Jesus tells the Jews who had believed in him that if you are truly my disciples, you'll continue in my word. You'll continue listening and obeying my teachings. And you would know the truth and the truth will make you free. First notice Jesus' use of the word truly. Seems there are some folks claiming Jesus who are not truly following Jesus, both then and now. There are some folks claiming Jesus whose actions are as far from Jesus as the East is from the West. There are some folks claiming Jesus whose actions are pure evil. There were Bibles and crosses and Jesus saves flags at the U.S. Capitol. There are some folks claiming Jesus whose actions are evil. And even at the moment in the text, in the dialogue with Jesus, were those who, according to Jesus, had believed in him but wanted to kill him. All the while, Jesus wanted to make them free. Yet they resisted, saying, We are descendants of Abraham and have never been slaves to anyone. My first point from the text is your sense of privilege and supremacy can cause you to miss the point, miss the truth, and miss your freedom. And just in case you think I'm talking to someone else, you, Jay just may have proved my point. In response to Jesus's offer to save them, make them free, the Jews who believed him in the text responded pointing to their heritage and their sense of supremacy. We are descendants. We are sons of Abraham. Let me draw the connection for you. Here in the scripture, we see just as Dr. King saw, that there is a mindset that my heritage makes me supreme. You see, the sons of former slave owners would have to overcome the sense of white supremacy, i.e. my heritage makes me supreme, before they'll truly sit at the table of brotherhood with the sons of the formerly enslaved. And thank God many have, but many have not. When Jesus offers to make them free, they said, we've never been slaves. What do you mean, make us free? Just like those debating Jesus, there were some today who might have the same reaction to the scripture, saying, we've never been slaves to anyone. How can Jesus make us free? Here's one for the note takers in the room. Just when you think you're not a slave and that he's not talking to you, just maybe you are a slave and he's surely talking to you. Be careful when your privilege causes you to miss the point and in turn miss Jesus and all that Jesus came to do for you in you and through you. James 4.10 says it this way, humble yourself before the Lord and the Lord will exalt you. The debate continues and there's more about heritage. Jesus says, I know that you are descendants of Abraham, yet you don't act like it. Allow me to paraphrase, you don't act like that's your heritage, for if you were from Abraham, you'd act like Abraham, but instead you're trying to kill me. Jesus says in verse 41, you're acting like your father. Yes, I got tense too, reading this whole chapter. It, it was just as tense as watching the impeachment hearings. For it is here that Jesus names the influence of evil. Still dreaming? 
wake up and realize that the influence of evil can reside in the hearts of men and women. So my second point on this King Sunday 2021 is when, when Dr. King would have turned 92 years old, it is an inconvenient truth that evil still resides in the hearts of many, not all, but many of the sons and daughters of former slave owners. There's an evil that we saw with our own eyes that some of us did not know was still there. But we should have known because it's the same evil that killed George Floyd and countless others. It's the same evil, in fact, that killed Dr. King at a young age. It's the same vitriol, the evil that has oppressed black and brown people since the inception of this country in ways I care not to recount. It's the same evil that carried a flag with the words Jesus saves to the U.S. Capitol on January 6th. Carrying a flag does not make a Christian. Jesus said, if you are truly my disciples, you would continue in my word. You would love your neighbor as yourself. You would bring good news to the poor, proclaim freedom for the prisoners, recovery of sight for the blind. You would set the oppressed free. But evil and bad teaching in the church can make a dangerous white supremacist who's full of hatred, vitriol, and danger think they are a follower of Jesus Christ who doesn't need to be set free. So my first point recapping is your sense of privilege and supremacy can cause you to miss the point, miss the truth, and miss your freedom. My second point, the inconvenient truth is that evil still resides in the hearts of many who don't think they need to be set free. And my last point is we can't possibly still be dreaming. We must wake up. We have work to do. January 6th has happened and we can't take it back. There are threats all over the USA today and throughout the week. And those threats can't be taken back. We will come out on the other side. You're looking for the hope. We will come out. Someone say, we will come out on the other side. We pray and ask God to heal the land, heal the people, and block the evil. And the reality is that all that has been revealed shows us that we have work to do. Still dreaming? Stop dreaming. For now we know the truth and the truth shall set us free. Still dreaming? Stop dreaming. For we have work to do. Jesus said, if you're truly my disciples, we would continue in his word. James 1.22 says it this way. Don't merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Stop thinking it's not talking about you. We have work to do. Where do we begin? And I'm almost done. I'm glad you asked. Where do we begin, Pastor? We begin within. Take inventory of yourself. What is your personal response when Jesus says, if you are truly my disciples, you would follow me and you shall know the truth and the truth will set you Free, have you been saying he's not talking to me? I've never been a slave, so I don't need to be set free. If you've been saying my people are just fine, it's all those other people who need Jesus. If you've been saying I don't identify with the need for salvation because everything's all right with me and mine, then the work you need to do is internal work with Jesus. You need a spiritual awakening and God is able. You need a spiritual cleansing to deal with the painful heritage that can't seem to go away. And God is able. God is a healer. God is a liberator for those who didn't even know they need liberated. Do the work. It's heart work. It's not so much head work. It's heart work. Do the work. It's soul work. It's necessary 
work. Talk to your pastors. More importantly, talk to God and do the work. Still dreamy, wake up, for we've got work to do. The evil we saw on January 6th has never gone anywhere except underground. It has put on uniforms and robes. It has been embedded in policies and government and education and in the, the incarceration system and every element of American society. It's called systemic racism and it has wreaked havoc on the black and brown communities. Why do you think these lyrics were penned? God of our weary years and God of our silent tears because the years have indeed been weary and the tears have been many for black people in America. So we must do the work of learning the history of this country, do the work of learning about systemic oppression, starting with slavery, going to counting black people as three-fifths human, learn how black people were held back in education, held back in the workplace, denied certain employment, held back from advancing just because we were black. Learn the history of how we were held in with housing redlining and discrimination. Learn the history of how we were held down by policing and drugs and guns literally dropped in our communities. Learn the history of how we were held in and prison executed. Learn that the evil is real and January 6th was simply a revealing of the evil that black people have dealt with for more than 400 years. And learn how the change that has occurred occurred because black people led the fight for freedom. Why did we fight for freedom? Because the, the singers just sang it. We who believe in freedom will not rest until it comes. And Jesus promised us that if the sun makes you free, you will be free indeed. Still dreaming, wake up and do the work. Hyde Park Union Church, the year of 2021 will be dedicated to waking up and doing the work. We will wake up and do the work of learning the truth about the American experience. And then we'll wake up and do the work of learning what it means to be anti-racist. And we'll wake up and do the work of teaching our children the truth so they don't grow up thinking they are better for being white or worse for being black, but they're all valuable because they are all God's children. All while we wake up and do the work of learning what it really truly means to be a follower of Christ. And as we do the work, we'll see a transformation happening in our hearts and in our minds. We'll see the Holy Spirit moving and teaching us and healing us and empowering us. We'll do the work and we'll do great work through the church and our families in the community and in the world. On this King Day 2021. Yes, tomorrow celebrate that much progress has been made, but also sit with the reality, the paradox that is staring us in the face this week that we have all so far to go and wake up and do the work for when the sun sets us free, we will be free indeed. God bless you.